Okay, two forces each of magnitude four newtons have a resultant of six. That means if I take one of the forces at four newtons and stick the other one on the end of it somehow, then from beginning of the first arrow to the end of the last arrow, it must be six. So if I do that one in purple, so I'm going to have, it's going to be something like this. Two, two forces, four Newton forces, the resultant, so from beginning of the first arrow to the end of the second arrow, that distance is six Newtons. And that gives me the thing, and then I can work out the angle between the two forces. So, obviously I need to work out this angle here. Well, actually, we'll, you'll see later on, I actually want to work out a different angle, but I'm going to work out that angle first. Obviously going to be cosine rule, so that's going to give me, that's 6 squared equals 4 squared plus 4 squared, that's a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc, so minus 2 times by the uh, 4 times by 4, and then that'll be cos of a, or let's call it theta, cos theta. So cos theta equals, add this to that side and take away 6 squared, 4 squared, plus 4 squared, minus the 6 squared, all over 2 times 4 times 4, and that equals minus 0.125, and so theta equals cos to the minus 1 of that, which is 97.1807 degrees, but that's not what I wanted, because actually they're both acting on a point, these things, so we've got the one here, we've got one force going like that, and this 4 Newton force, instead of acting here, it's actually acting down here. So it's going like that. So we don't want, we, we've just worked out, we've worked out this angle here. And so the angle between them is, that's the angle we want, which is 180 minus that. So we need, we want 180 minus that angle. And that equals 82.8. 8192 degrees. That's our angle. We've got 82.8 to three significant figures. Right. Let's see what happens now. The two given forces, that's these two forces here of magnitude 4 n, act on a particle of mass m which remains at rest on a smooth horizontal surface. Okay, so we've got a smooth horizontal surface here. Yeah. And this particle is at rest on there. Well, that means that these two forces, they cannot be, they must be going it so that the resultant goes straight upwards. Because if it were to go at all to one side, it would go that way because it's a smooth horizontal surface. So let's just put some forces on here. We can put the weight coming straight down. That's mg. The surface exerts a force of 3 newtons on the particle, so that's a normal contact force that should be going straight up, 3 newtons. And then we've got to put the these two forces, so I'll, I did it in purple here, so that's 6 newtons also going straight up, because I say if it went to one side, and don't forget that 6 newtons, I'll put them in pink this time, is made up of 4 going up here, and 4 going up here so it's four and that's four but let's see what we can do we need to do as we normally would do and we've got to find the find m and give the acute angle so i need to find m first that means i'm going to have to resolve vertically and there's no acceleration vertically so therefore the uh, downwards will equal the upwards and so that'll be the mg equals 3 plus 6 which is 9 so m will equal 9 over 9.8 which equals 0 0.9183734 kilograms 0 0.918 and we also have to find the angle between the surface and one of the four newton forces so i've got to find this angle here but in order to do that i'm going to find i know this angle already I know that angle is 97.18, and this is an isosceles triangle. So this angle here, in this bit here, 
that bit is going to be it's a triangle but it's an isosceles triangle so i'm going to do 180 take away that 97.1807 and divide it by 2 and that will give me what that angle is which is 41.4096 and we want this angle which is 90 minus that and that equals 48.5937789 degrees or 48.6 degrees to three significant figures and that's the answer we want that was quite difficult to get your head around what was going on important things that it was smooth and it was at rest meant that it wasn't going to be moving so that meant that that's those two forces had to be, the resultant had to be vertical. And uh, that's three done.